Hello, my name is Ian Thompson. I'm from Livermore in California. The theory of multiple planes and their connections. And I'm going to apply this theory to the question of visual object recognition by animals and humans. In this talk, I'm going to use planes, levels and degrees more or less interchangeably. Most of us know that there are many levels of reality, such, such as the, the ordering from the source to the spirit, to the mind, to the body. And these, but these planes, of course, or levels must be systematically connected together. And it looks like, we say, there are many dimensions. But the question is, are these levels or planes part of one big space or are there many spaces? John Smithies and Bernard Carr, among others, have suggested that they're just part of one big space. But the trouble is that Einstein's principles of general relativity, which Bernard Carr says he's following, don't allow for any special significance to the directional ordering of these dimensions, because rotations continually transform from one to the other without changing the dynamics. So that means that there's no such thing as a higher dimension if you only have one big space. I want to explore the alternative view that there are multiple levels or planes, each with their own discrete space. But of course, we still need inter interconnections between them, even if now there are no longer intersections. I'm going to th look at a view which, in which there is downward causality, top-down energizing from the beginning to the end, a process of generation or production or energizing, and upward, I'm going to consider selection or constraint, which I'll explore in the next slide. So the upper levels could provide motive or a love or intelligence, consciousness, and the lower levels could supply an outer permanence, like being a container built out of past actions. Each level has its own space, its own substances, its own dynamics, and now there are higher dimensions. Let's apply this to the question of visual object recognition. The problem is that humans and animals can quickly recognize visible objects despite varying distances, rotations, lighting, and whether they're moving or not. And they seem to do this within a one-tenth of a second, in, w in which time only a hundred neural steps are possible. Even frogs can recognize flies and their location so one single plane or materialist attempted solution is that of Carl Friston's predictive processing. In this theory, predicted scenes quickly adjusted so that they agree with the view from the eyes. There might be enough neurons in the brain to do this, pro probably at least, but it's difficult to get them co to coordinate quickly enough together to work in this way. I'm going to look at a two-level method for object recognition, in which there's a material level, the green here, which contains object that's being seen, namely the apple, the eyes, which see the apple by means of light, and the brain, which gets information from the eye. But as well as this level, I'm going to think of or theorize that there's a mental level in which there are possible forms of conceivable objects, which are quite different kinds of substances. And their ideas or some objects of consciousness, not material objects. So there are now different spaces and different substances, but we can, we can still think of quantum-like processes in both of these planes. And in particular, there are quantum measurements in both of them. And, and my idea of this constraint which connects them together is that whenever there is a quantum measurement or reduction of the wave packet, then it simultaneously constrains both the material level and the mental level. And if you work through the details here, then you can see that what is seen by the eyes rapidly constrains both the sensory sheet that we see with our consciousness, as well as the possible list of ideas of objects actually seen. So you end up with just one idea, namely the idea of the apple, which is what was seen. So to summarize, we can see that it's fruitful to, con to consider multiple planes or levels, each with its own dimensions, metric substances, etc. Mental objects are now able to behave very differently from physical objects, but they're still linked. The events are generated downwards and constraints. The results of those events work upwards. And then this idea of visual object recognition shows how two such levels could work together and be part of science. And in fact, we can have more than two. We can have multiple levels, each with a kind of dualism between them. But this is not the dreaded dualism of Descartes because we've solved in this theory what Descartes' interaction problem. We can have interactions 
which can be tested experimentally in psychological sciences. And so dualisms are not forbidden in science. And I summarize at the end by saying that my ideas are derived from Emanuel Swedenborg's theory of discrete degrees. So he's the person to read if you want more information of this kind of theory.